Hello everyone. All these grade sevens waiting for today's natural sciences lesson. Well, let me introduce myself. I am Helen and I'm going to be walking this natural sciences journey with you and I hope we're going to have a lot of fun together and we're going to learn a lot together. So what are we going to focus on today? In today's lesson, we're looking at the physical properties of matter. Wow, what a mouthful. Let's try and break some of that down so that we understand precisely what it is we're looking at. So everything around us is made of different materials. My pen, my clothes, my hair, all this wonderful technology in front of me, everything. Where you're sitting, what you're sitting on, what you're wearing, all of those objects we say are made out of different materials. Every material has a particular property. So if we look at these common objects that you may be familiar with from your own homes and your lives, we know that a bath for example, is made out of a completely different material to a beach ball, for example. But it's important that we choose the material to make an object in such a way that the material, material is suitable for whatever function that object has to play. Still a little bit worried? Let's go and take a step back. What precisely do we mean by physical properties? I think by now you understand that everything around us is made of materials. But what do we mean by the physical properties of those materials? Well, we're looking at characteristics that could describe how the material behaves or properties or characteristics that the material has. So you thought this was just a life sciences, natural sciences lesson. What we're also going to be looking at is helping you with a little bit of your language as well, because when we are looking at these characteristics, we are looking at words that describe an object. And I'm sure you remember that words that describe an object are called Adjectives. So, adjectives help us to describe the properties or characteristics that a certain material has. Let's focus on this metal pot. I'm sure you're all very familiar with a metal pot. Let's think of some of the characteristics or properties of the metal that makes this pot. First of all, let's pick an easy one. The pot is strong, okay? It is not going to bend when you fill it with soup or something that you're cooking with. It's strong. And if you're helping with the washing up, I hope you are, I hope you're that kind of kid that helps with the washing up, and you drop that pot on the floor, Chances are, if you drop it on your toe, you're going to hurt your toe. You won't hurt the pot. Maybe it will dent a little bit, but the pot is strong. It's made out of metal, and this particular metal is very strong. Let's look at another adjective to describe another characteristic of our metal pot. Durable. Okay, do you remember what durable means? Durable means it is going to last. Think of when you blow your nose on a tissue. You can't reuse that tissue. Tissue paper isn't very durable. You need to throw it away. And if you need to blow your nose again, you need to use another tissue. Now, it's not the same with a metal pot. 
You don't use a new metal pot every time you need to cook your supper. You use the same pot. It lasts for years. Do you know something? I've got some pots in my cupboard that my mother used when I was a child. So that's how durable metal pots are. They last for a very long time. Let's pick on another distinctive characteristic or property of the metal pot that we're examining. Malleable. All right, malleable sounds like a very tricky word, but it comes from a Latin word, malleus, which means hammer. So, a property of a substance that can be described as malleable means we could take a hammer and we can beat that material with our hammer to make thin sheets of the metal, right? And you think about the pot. The pot is thin around the edges. It's not a very big, chunky piece of metal. Think of your car doors and panels that make up vehicles. They're also metal that has been beaten in order to make it quite thin. So that's another property of our metal pot. And one of the last properties we're going to focus on is it's shiny. Now, shiny, you may think, well, it just makes the pot pretty or it makes the pot attractive to look at. And we can see that it's nice and clean because it's shiny. Shininess is also going to help us when we look at how heat is conducted through a material. But we'll come to that aspect in a couple more lessons. Let's move on. Look at our pot again and answer the question, would it be useful to us if instead of the properties of strength and durability and malleability, it had these properties, all right? What would happen if your pot was flexible and you picked it up and it was full of soup and it kind of collapsed and it would be a disaster? What if our pot was fragile? And every time you stirred something in the pot, the spoon cracked or broke the edges of the pot. That wouldn't be very functional, would it? What if the pot got rusty? That wouldn't be very healthy for us to eat out of food that was prepared in a rust pot. Not at all. And what if the pot was a poor conductor of heat? In other words, we put our vegetables and, and items that we want to cook inside the pot. We put the pot on a very hot, hot plate and the heat did not conduct through the metal pot in order to cook the food. The pot would be useless. So we need to understand that the properties of materials or their characteristics determine their suitability for a particular use. So let's think about the properties of materials and how suitable they are. We'll start off with a beach ball. The material that makes up the beach ball is a kind of plastic. Now, is that plastic suitable for making the beach ball? I think it is. And for these reasons, this plastic is very light. It's not a heavy material, which means that we can throw the beach ball. And if someone throws it at us, it doesn't hurt us or damage us and knock us over. We also know that the plastic is flexible means that we can let the air out of it and the beach ball will go down. We can blow it up and the beach ball will expand. What about this metal drum? It is made out of metal and we know as we've examined the pot that the metal makes it strong. It makes it durable. It makes it inflexible but all of these things suit all of these characteristics make it suitable for its function of storing liquids and very often those liquids might be dangerous that can't contaminate the environment 
So we need to know that anything stored in a drum or a metal barrel is going to be safe and secure inside the barrel. What about books? We've got two different types of paper here. We've got the paper that makes up the pages and we've got the paper that makes up the cover of the book. Now the cover is less flexible or less bendy if you want to think of it than what the pages are. They're very flexible. They're also very lightweight. So you can put the book in your bag and you can carry it around with you. Imagine if books were made out of stone. We wouldn't be able to carry them around with us. It would be very difficult to turn the pages, wouldn't it? What about our cold drink can? It is made out of a substance, a material, a kind of metal called aluminium. And aluminium is flexible and it is strong, but you can also crush it and very importantly, you can recycle it, which means it's good for the environment. Try this one yourselves. What is the material? And is it suitable for its function due to the properties that it has? Well, the material is glass. What are the properties that make it so suitable to maybe containing honey, jam, or peanut butter? Well, first of all, it's a, a property that we haven't heard of today. It's transparent. We can see through it, so we are able to see what is inside the jar. We also know, however, that it's fragile. So we need to be very careful that we don't drop the jar. What about our bath? What material is a bath made out of? Now, long ago, baths were made of metal. Maybe you've got an old-fashioned bath that is a metal bath. But later, baths were made out of a ceramic covered with enamel. And today, you even get plastic baths. And you can see that if a bath is plastic, it's going to be lightweight. If it's metal, it's going to be very heavy. But a metal bath is going to be more durable or last longer than a plastic bath. You can see that we have to really consider very carefully the material that we're using to manufacture objects and make sure that that material is completely suited in terms of its characteristics or properties for the use it is going to have. Our final challenge, and I want you to think about this, it's a bit of fun, but it's also important to see if you've understood what we've been talking about today. Let's consider a car made out of gold. Now, it looks amazing, and you're going to be the envy of all your friends if you had a golden car. But is gold the most suitable material? to make our car out of. Well, have a look at the windows. Are you going to be able to see out of the windows? No, they're not transparent as glass is. What's going to happen to these wheels if we haven't got rubber tires in order to grip onto the road? How heavy do you think this car is going to be? Do you think the car is going to get very hot inside if we can't open windows? I want you to think about this puzzle with the golden car and try and list some advantages and disadvantages of if we had cars made out of gold. I've enjoyed my time with you today and we've just touched on different properties of materials and in our next lesson we're going to learn a lot more and so I'll see you again. Bye-bye.